three, we have might seem like a little bit of a strange setup. We have a particle traveling in what we say is four-dimensional space, and we give uh, some function describing its path, some vector function. Well, it might not make sense to um, to visualize you know, a particle traveling in four-dimensional space. Uh, mathematically, it's no problem at all. We just add another coordinate, and we can work um, work with formulas in exactly the same way. Just instead of having two or three coordinates, now we have just four. So uh, we're given the uh, a particle that's traveling on this path, and we're asked to find the distance traveled, and we're going to find the distance traveled. Um, uh, from 0 to 2 pi, so from t equals 0 to t equals 2 pi. Right, well, this is just equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi of uh, a, cosine, a squared cosine squared of t. Uh, hang on a sec. So we're, of course we want to um, make the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the magnitude of um, the velocity vector. Uh, so I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit. But if we find the velocity vector, um, this is equal to a, or negative a, sine of t, uh, a cosine of t, b, uh, negative b sine of t, and b cosine of t. So the magnitude of um, the velocity vector is just going to be, well, square root of the sum of each of the coordinates squared. So we have a squared sine squared of t plus a squared cosine squared of t plus b squared sine squared of t plus b squared cosine squared of t. And square root of that entire thing, dt. Well, Let's just look here. Here we've got a squared sine squared of t, a squared cosine squared of t. So we could factor out an a squared, write that as sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t. But that now is just equal to 1 by the Pythagorean identity. And similarly, the last two terms are just equal to b squared. So Really, we're just integrating uh, the constant function square root of a squared plus b squared um, over the interval 0 to 2 pi. And this is just equal to square root of a squared plus b squared times 2 pi. Now, if you Think about it, this is actually very similar to a formula that you're very familiar with. Say if we were just working in two dimensions, we, let's just kind of ignore the, the last two for a moment. And if we're just working in two dimensions, then this would be, tra this would be tracing um, out the path of a particle traveling around a circle of radius A. You know, starting from uh, the point A0 and traveling around counterclockwise. Well, we have, here we have four dimensions, so kind of in two dimensions, that's what's happening. And in the other two dimensions, the exact same thing is happening, um, only it's traveling, it's tracing out a radius of, uh, tracing out a circle of radius B. So if, just in the case of two dimensions, the distance traveled is, well, 2 pi times um, times the square root, well, 
kind of silly to think about it, but it's really 2 pi times the square root of the radius squared. Um, so in other words, two, 2 pi times the radius. Well, this is actually equal to the radius of, um, and this is equal to the radius of kind of the object that we're traveling around, in a, meaning that this uh, number, square root of a squared plus b squared, is the distance from the origin to any point on the path uh, that the particle is traveling on. So just like um, a is the distance from any point on the circle to uh, origin, this number square root of a squared plus b squared is the um, distance from any point on the origin to, from the origin to, um, to the surface that we're traveling around, um, defined by this path. So again, we're just multiplying that by 2 pi, similarly to the case in two dimensions. <laughs> 